because I was doing commercial stuff. I just hadn't done any residential yet. Nice. So the first opportunity I got, I made that build video, and I got eight leads in two days off of that video. Nice. Right after we started it. That's incredible. What's up, everybody? I've got an incredible story for you. A buddy of mine, uh, another young cat that's killing it in the game. He's got an incredible YouTube channel, The Bow Hike Experience, for any of my hunters that are out there. Go find this guy on YouTube. He's a growing commercial and residential contractor. He's got a young family, and he comes from a background that a lot of contractors don't. He's grew up in a Mennonite farm, and he went on his own, started his own business, uh, young guy now getting some massive results and he's on his way to his first seven figure year it's my man trey hostetler dude welcome to the blue collar boardroom how you doing buddy i'm doing great thanks for having me lee i feel honored to be here and uh love watching your stuff so it's, well, it's let good me tell y'all about this story yesterday trey and i were on the same team at the blue collar boot camp and uh there was this tire this tire was <laughs> 900 pounds and uh, I've been going to the boxing gym. I've been working out, but shh, I guess I've been skipping leg day. And uh, <laughs> this man comes from a farm. He's strong like a like an ox, like a little pit bull. And he got up underneath that tire. He got the position. He got that son of a bitch up and over. And I couldn't. I could not move the thing hardly. And so this man's built like an ox. He was carrying the uh, the 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 what, what was it? Uh, Just like a ten foot log. It was a ten foot log. Yeah. By himself, his, his <laughs> partner, not me, but his partner got tired, so he's carrying a log by himself. Actually, Chris said it was easier to carry him. It, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't not, too bad. Not for an old farm boy. It's not it's nothing I'm not used to. Well, tell us about growing up on a Mennonite farm. What's it like? Well, um, what, it, what were your values? What did they teach you? Hard work. Mm -hmm. Hard work, um, starting at a young age. Um, you know, we all graduated eighth grade, which mm -hmm. is basically you're 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? You get a job. You mm -hmm. start working. Mm -hmm. And that was me. Um, what was your I, job? My first job, um, I had a bunch of different jobs. Believe it or not, one of the first things I did was get on commercial roofs with my uncle. I believe I was 10, 11 years old. Um, Crops roofing is what it was called. And, um, yeah, just get up and help, like, you know, a lot of fluid applied systems you need somebody holding the hose you need somebody using the back roller on acrylic coatings you need help power washing that's what i did during the summer uh, then when i got out of school um we actually moved down to arkansas from well we we were living in northern arkansas we moved to southern arkansas so we moved communities and uh i my first job real job was uh i was a helper on lawn mowing service with my uncles so i did a whole summer of, of lawn mowing weed eating and then i believe it was the next summer when i uh actually got a uh, skid steer operator job so i clean out poultry houses chicken manure um, i would pile all the manure in the front of the barn and uh load it into big I bet semis that smelled good oh it did trust me god <laughs> dang this guy's an yeah. animal blue collar to the train dirty child yeah okay. yeah yeah when i was 18 years old um so, you know, I started working full-time when I was 16, no high school. And when I was 18, I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, I, I put these long, long hours in it. And, you know, weekly, like 80-hour weeks, I was making $25 an hour. I, I felt like, you know, I'm going to be a man. You know, mm -hmm. I'm making a lot of money. Um, and I, I, that's when it started click, clicking for me as far as, like, hey, if you want to do something in life, just put the work in. Mm -hmm. Because I was seeing the results, you know, Absolutely. and I was getting paychecks and uh, that it was life changing for me just to see because that job. I think society beats that out of people. Yeah, it does. I yeah, mean, it, does. it creates entitlement. We've got an epidemic of snowflakes oh, out there for that sure. don't know how to work. Right, right. And so, I mean, you got better education from the eighth grade than a lot of people do finishing a Ph.D., yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's part of the point of this whole channel, save the trades, raise the status of the blue-collar entrepreneur. But I'm sure um, starting your own business, going off on your own, though, at what when did, when did you do that? Okay, so um, I met my wife when I was 18, and uh -huh. we 
ultimately got married when I was 21. Mm -hmm. And when I got married, I left that job I was just talking about and, and went to work for her father, which who has a commercial roofing restoration company, especially in the Conklin trades is mostly what he does. So I was his roofing foreman for commercial uh, roofs only, no residential at all um, for five years. And so basically, um, I have a good relationship with him, but I had just gotten to the point where I have a little baby now. Um, I want to take care of my mom. I want to. I want to go places in life. I want to have a boardroom like Lee. Hey, you know? he's this guy. Let me tell you something. He's a social sales king. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> All right. From but his humble background. The man has got talent. You got to check out his YouTube. He's got one video with 192,000 views. It's a great elk hunt. It's an incredible, sh incredible thing, man. Uh, bow hunt. You have to tell us a little bit about that. But more importantly. Uh, his ad campaign was one of the most effective ad campaigns out of everybody that came in for this recent boot camp. He followed the script. He was coachable. And what happened? So I filmed my first uh, build video on my mom's house because I, well, no, it was the hidden damage video because I didn't have any inspections at the time and I wanted to get the video going. So I was just like, uh, my brother does the, the camera work for my YouTube channel. And so I was like, hey, meet me at my mom's house. We're going to get on the roof. We're going to you know, I just put your script in, change it up a little bit, and I shot it on my mom's roof. Uh, just, you know, hey, got to make it work, right? And uh, I got 12 leads off of that video in two weeks. And then as soon, like, I'm not kidding you, the first residential job I got, I did the build video. Just that was the first I could do one, right? This is the f very first build for my company because I was doing commercial stuff. I just hadn't done any residential yet. Nice. So the first opportunity I got, I made that build video, and I got eight leads in two days off of that video. Nice. Right after we started it. That's incredible. Yeah. And, um, you know, the biggest thing is is that you were doing all commercial. So the idea of sometimes people think, well, i got to be all commercial. i got to be all residential. And, you know, I tell people there's you can do both, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I, I we were just talking about – uh, creating a commercial sales funnel and executing a big plan. But uh, talk to me a little bit about um, starting a residential and, and going from on the roof to selling roofs. Tough transition, but uh, it's, it's also why I came to your uh, event. That's why I'm here is because I had to have somebody teach me the fundamentals of a residential roof, how to sell it, how to talk to home, like everything. Like literally, like I was new stuff. Like, like you would hire a new sales guy. Mm -hmm. I took your teaching and your course and, you know, implemented it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like the first couple, like before this year, before January, I was never on a residential roof. Mm -hmm. Like I know everything I need to know about commercial. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm very so grateful. So how many residential roofs have you done so far? Uh, five. Oh, nice. Five. And I've got a ton, tons of leads coming in nice. for more. So, nice. so we're, we're building. And yeah. honestly, like... Uh, being around your guys here, uh -huh. you know, talking to all the guys at the boot camp, uh -huh. you know, even at the blue collar event, I just took everything that I learned and applied it and it works. You know, it turns out residential is easy, you know, it turns out it is, <laughs> you know, and it's funny, we were talking about, uh, coatings and, you know, using foam and how it's hard to use. And you're like, Oh no, you just got to take the moisture out. I'm sure. <laughs> well, you've been on coding roofs since you're 10 years old. I mean, yeah. we're salesmen. Okay. Right. We don't always yeah. know how right. to do, navigate that. Right. So talk to me a little about your commercial business and how you generate the business. A lot of my guys watch this. They want to sell more commercial jobs. So how do you generate your leads on your commercial? How I generate so far this year. So I've done telemarketing leads uh, for, so I did a campaign that ran a whole 30 day span. I did it three, three months now. So far, my total lead count has been better with the telemarketing leads, but the converting the job has been the best from the direct mail. Mm -hmm. And I've done two different direct, I did a 10,000 a piece direct mail where I'm just offering like, hey, Titan commercial roofing, uh, we're in Missouri. Here are a few photos of the jobs we did. It's very basic, nothing fancy, and the company just sends it out, and I get phone calls. Um, that that's been my hot like like on a ten thousand mailer. I believe I got twelve phone calls, and I converted eighty percent of them. There you go, guys. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, like, subscribe, comment. I forgot to tell everybody all the time that, but. 
Let me tell you, we're going to be doing some giveaways. Uh, I'm going to be giving away guns, trips, free coaching calls, access to my events. But you got to be a subscriber, and you have to be stay tuned. We're going to be doing uh, some different stuff over the next coming up. But subscribe because we're going to be throwing some nice stuff on the on this channel. Um, like maybe a epic hunting trip with my there you man go. here as, there you the, go. as the guide. Let's do it. Tell us about um, some of your, your, your best hunts. Some of my best hunts. Well, I've done uh, f- four elk hunts. Um, honestly, like I would like to say like my first elk hunt, same concept as getting into the roofing business. I know nothing about being a business owner, but you have to, like Brian is great on this. Like you're about to have, he's out here. Um, he just talks about, you know, if you want something, go to Google, figure it out. Like, you know, he, he keeps saying that that mindset thing of just figuring it out. That's what elk hunting was. I didn't know anything about elk hunting. So I went to, to Google, went to YouTube, channels like yours for, for roofing. You know, I found hunting channels and just soak the information in, try to, you know, prepare yourself the best you can. And then you go into the field and you figure it out. It's just like my roofing business. So it's you why to, I love elk hunting. You go into public land. You've got, go, your, you got your call. Yep. And you don't have a guide. Because, dude, I'm the no. guy that just pays people to take me hunting right, and fishing, right. dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, no. You got you a map. I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, okay. you got a map. You obviously want to check your regulations, buy your tag, yeah. make sure you're all legal. Uh-huh. Once you got all that down, you just buy a map. You watch yourself that you stay on public land. Take out your elk call and, and try, to, try to call out for elk. That's it. That's uh, it. I'll tell you, my first year elk hunting in Colorado, public land, um, I, I hunted, we hunted 20 days, I kid you not, 20 days, and we saw, we saw a total of like eight elk, and it was like tw- 20 days, so three out of the 20 days was the only days we ever saw an elk. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. Yeah. But it all changed for me because I was able to learn so much from that hunt. I took everything I learned not to do and to do. What did you, not, then, what did you, what did you learn not to do? Everything. <laughs> everything. You know, I hunted the same spots twice, you know, or three times in a row. So the thing with elk hunting, if you do something once and it doesn't work, don't do it again. If Uh you go a place and there's no elk there, don't go again. Uh So um, there's a bunch of takeaways like that. So my second year, I draw a Wyoming tag. Everything changed. I, I, you know, I took all that information from the prior year and I killed a nice bull elk and it's on my YouTube on my fourth day in Wyoming. Oh dang! That's yeah. the one you killed with the. Yeah. With, oh man. That was my first elk, dude. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up. Talk to me a little bit about the hunt, and then I'll show them uh, the kill shot. Right on. So um, the hunt went well, actually. My so it's me and my wife and my brother. Um, we got we got into Wyoming about 3 p.m. It was September 11th, 10th or 11th. I don't remember the date. Um, we got to Wyoming. Drove in, really didn't know the area except for just some little pre, uh, you know, scouting online. Uh, so we get to this uh, trailhead. We park the car and we walk up this like a half mile up this little hill, rather a mountain. And uh, we get to the top and we just set for the evening trying to look for elk, right? So, and, and we found elk. First evening there, we found elk. And so that gave me an indicator like, hey, this is the general area I want to head into. And, dude, it was just... From that point on, it was a wrap. Like, we were in elk every single day. Um, the first time actually going into this area, I actually missed a bull elk. Oh, my wow. first day of hunting, I missed a bull elk. At, how, how, how close were you? He was like 70 yards, and it's actually in this video. Oh, wow. So I was down, just kind of like roofing. Uh-huh. I was down. I was beat. But guess what? Back into the field the next day. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. we go back into the same area, and... Uh, you know, God was watching out for me, and uh-huh. uh, that bull just, I mean, I, I'm greatly humbled. Like, I do think that I'm a good hunter, you know, but the reality is in hunting, it, it takes a lot of hard work along with a little bit of luck. And the thing is, if you don't put the hard work in, you're not going to get the luck. And, and that's it. Like, like we were, we were, I'll tell you a little bit more about the actual hunt. Well, look, let me tell you, that's how, the, that's how business is. I mean... See, the thing is, is people want to land trophy animals, mm-hmm. but they don't want to do the work. Right. They, they, they don't want to pay the price. See, anything right. in life 
that's worth having, like a trophy elk, there's going to be natural resistance. Disruption always follows intention. Right. You miss. You you have to go 20 days. You, you can only see them three days. I mean, most people wouldn't even have pers- kept going. Right. Past that point. Right. Um. And and here you are, like two years into your journey, you've wasted. 30 days, you've missed one whole elk. Yeah. And this is day four, the final day of the hunt. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this is the last day. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you don't shoot here, this is two That's years it. in a row yeah. that you didn't get nothing. Yeah. So this yeah. is like fourth quarter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, so y'all sleep out there in the woods? Well, so we sleep by the car. We park the, we park the car at the end of like a gravel road. It's called a trailhead. Mm-hmm. And so we'll usually just pitch the tent right there. Uh, but but yeah, you're out. You're no cell service. There's no electricity. That you're sleeping. You're sleeping in the stars. It's it's real man shit. Real man shit. <laughs> All right. So yeah. let's see if we can't hear this. I mean, I... so th- so this is this right here is where. So this right here is at eleven o'clock in the afternoon. Me, my brother's with me. My wife's sitting at the car because she's sore from the prior day from hiking i did i believe we did 12 miles the day before this day and she was just beat down so she did she wasn't with but i knew i had to go back into the field because there's too much opportunity too much elk there um so so i was back in there and we were we had heard this elk bugle now listen to this oh yeah See, see, that's the bull calling back at me. So essentially what I did just there was he's bedded down with a bunch of cow elk, and I'm saying, hey, I'm, a, I'm the biggest, baddest motherfucker, and I'm here to take your cows. I'm serious. I'm coming to come fuck your couch. I'm serious. That's what it is, and that's why he came in. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's why he came. So he's coming in to fight. But oh, it's the shit. middle of the day. These elk have been calling all morning. We've been trying to catch up to him. This is three miles from where we started first hearing him. So we had to chase him. Three miles. I'm not kidding. He's you. not moving though, is he? Not right now. He had stopped. But we had almost given up and I just you know shit. Oh, here you can see yeah, this. Son yeah, of a yeah, yeah. So now now how far away is he? Uh that's like seventy yards and in. So I can shoot out to forty on an elk. So he's he's getting close to bow range. And he's walking, so he's he's closing the distance fast. What kind of bow do you use? Uh, I've got a Hoyt Carbon R X one. So he's walking into 18 yards here, and what, what's going to happen is I'm in the wide open 18 yards, and he sees me, and he starts to turn, and I just let her rip. Oh, what if he charges you? Well, it's, I don't... <laughs> it's you or him, huh? Yeah, that's right. Were you, were you worried about him charging you? No, no. Oh! Yep, I got him right behind I the shoulder. I saw that arrow sticking out of that <laughs> son of a bitch. Yep, yep. So the reason you call uh-huh. is, to, is to stop him. You want him to stop as soon as possible after you, you shoot him. Because uh-huh. the farther he goes, the more of a chance it is that you'll never find him. Ah. Make sense? Uh-huh. So that's why we call. And now I'm doing just, just a few cow calls, but I'll grab my bill Damn, so your first elk you ever shot, you documented it so well that you got almost 200,000 yeah. <laughs> views. Look, you got to put yeah, yourself out there, Lee. Let me tell you something, guys. Um, my man Trey here. He's located in Missouri. What part of Missouri? Springfield, Missouri. And he's hiring salespeople. That's right. And he's looking for people that want to live the American dream. And if that means go hunting and land an, an elk, look, the beautiful thing is, is that you can land commercial roofs to pay for the trips. You can land residential roofs. We got the leads. We got the marketing campaigns. I'm partnered with Trey. And we're looking for good people, top performers. People want to work hard for experiences like this. And uh, I see a little blood. Oh yeah! Oh man, <laughs> they get a little excited there. Oh yeah! Oh but, yeah! So you so now you know you're probably not going to lose him. Yeah. Oh yeah. By now, I mean you never know till you find him. Obviously, but uh-huh. um, I've shot enough whitetails to know blood doesn't always mean death. But um, yeah, we're just a little bit emotional from putting a whole year in <laughs> and not not having any success. So, um, but yeah, I mean what, I had good what, enough blood. Can you I see him now. No, not yet. Not yet. We had just, so what we did was just right away, went and looked for a little bit of blood, a little bit of evidence that I had made a good shot. And so once we saw that, we were like, okay, let's wait like 30 minutes. Let's, let's not push the situation. Because if you push an animal, and if he's laying there, let's just say half dead, yeah. and you push him, now your odds of finding him are very low. Dude, I have. I don't know if I'd have enough patience for this game. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be running up there trying to it, sack a Jawiz. It, it's... It's not for the faint of heart, Lee. It's not. 
Or for the ADD fucking unpatient fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. If you go out and harvest an animal in the wild. And how, how, how long what, what, how long did you eat off of this guy? Oh, I'm still eating off him. Oh, yeah. No yeah. kidding. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, so, you, so this bull here, I got 320 pounds of deboned meat from. Oh, my God. So you imagine just filling your cooler with like a, like a, like a steer, you know? Uh-huh. Like a cow. That's what it is. Like a whole cow. Yeah, like a whole cow. Yeah. And it's, it, this, this meat here, if you, if you fry up a burger on a Traeger, it, it's different. It's yeah. not. It's, oh, I like elk. I like, I like elk and bison. They're, the, they're my favorite when it comes to stuff besides cow. Yeah. It's not. Venison's good, but it's, yeah. not, it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. And elk is, is different. And once you put your blood, sweat, and tears in, and, and not, only, not only that, you know, working out in the summer, staying in shape, staying disciplined to yeah. be able to do this, like. You going to touch it, boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just a, a little kid with a big dream. That's, that's what this is all about, and I'm just willing to put the work in. And... Do you have a mohawk, too? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I'll never forget it. I will never, never forget this moment. Oh, that's incredible, dude! And you yep. didn't need a you didn't need to pay a guide to do it for no, you. No, that's right, that's you, right. You went onto YouTube. You, you you made the YouTube video yourself. You still eating on the guy? Yeah, man, what an incredible story, bro! Yeah, we that's, need to get you out on an elk oh, hunt. It'll it'll change your life. Look at that picture, man. Yeah. Hey, look at that <laughs> rack, man! Congratulations, <laughs> thank buddy. you. Let me tell you something, man. We're, we're going to scale the crap out of your roofing company, okay? And as long as you execute all the stuff that we did in this boot camp, there is absolutely no way you'll fail. Yeah. And I know that you have what it takes because I was on your team. And risk is the down payment for success. And whatever energy that you have left at the end of a grueling task, sometimes you have to reinvest, reinvest 70%, 80% of the energy, i.e. monies back into your business to, mm -hmm. to get to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. But remember... When you're buying, when you're paying for people, not only are you giving people an opportunity to grow their lives, not only, but what you're doing is you're buying time. And, and reality is you like to hunt so much, this takes a lot of time. Oh, yeah. You need a business that's able to run to where you, you could go away for 20 days without it all, without your income and everything falling apart. That's going to take consistent marketing, which you've already got the beginnings of. It's going to take a sales team, which we're getting started with. You already know how to sell both residential and commercial and are a damn good uh, roofing contractor that knows the you know, quality work. So you're going to give people better service, more transparency than the next guy. For sure. I think uh, the most important thing is, is that you realize that um, it's just like the work you put into getting these big old bull elks. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's going to test your patience. There's going to be times where you want to quit. But the kind of... Um, you know, uh, resolve and persistence that you showed to get this animal, um, man, that tells me that you're, you're going to be successful with my program. And I'm so excited because having me be the guy to help you sell your first residential roofs when we come back and we're doing a catch up here a year from later, later, and you've got 300 jobs and you've sold more commercial and you've got a team of people, man, it's just going to be an incredible story. It will. It and will so be. I'm pumped about it, man. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the guys said to you, Hey, um, I wouldn't go off into hiring family. And I, I, I understand why working with family is a challenge because I've worked with family and it's worked and sometimes it hadn't worked, but I will tell you this. Okay. Um, the people that are closest to us, we have, uh, really a duty to serve. So you just have to ask yourself a question. What's best for them? What if and so if you're able to make their future a better place, and the consequences potentially that um, that there may be some some tough stuff that you have to go through together, and and that it's going to challenge and 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 your relationship, well, what doesn't kill it will make it stronger, and the reality is is that you just have to be willing to do what's best for the person, and you have to be willing to also step up. And say, you know what? I'm gonna love you throughout this, regardless of what happens. You're still gonna be family. It doesn't matter if you fail. Mm -hmm. I'm, I want you to be impactful in the business. I want this to work for you. But you know, regardless of what happens, we're still family. And and 
and even with my family, even doing business with my dad for as long as I have, there's certain times when we don't agree, but we're always kind of able to put our, our family relationship a little separate from time right. to time than the business relationship. Right. And, I, and I don't think that, you know, just because one person can't do it, then another person can't do it either. So, you know, we talked about um, people to get into your business. Right. And, I, and you, you asked about your brothers and sisters, and I highly encourage to get them involved, you know, and say, you know, let's go. Let's, let's get behind this mission to build wealth for our family, to be that difference maker in a family tree, that one person. You are that guy for your family tree that makes every single person pass this. This was the example. Look, you are already uh, out there as a social sales king on YouTube with a lot of subscribers, a lot of views. And, you know, what I was going to tell you was, you know, make make sure and incorporate your business into your hunting videos. Like, hey, you know, on your next hunting videos, just talk about how you can afford to take the time, what you were able to do. Show some clips of the roofs and of the home and the business and the backstory, and incorporate that more. And then all of a sudden, more people that are watching the bow hike experience will be like, hey, let tell me more about being a roofing sales pro. Tell me more about joining Titan Roofing. Tell me more about. Um, maybe being a partner in some form or fashion. Right on. And so, um, man, dude, you're going to be incredibly successful. I know, I, I know it. You just stick to it, and uh, you, you you showed some incredible uh, courage, strength. That's why you were winner of the battle axe. We had we gave away battle axes, and it, you should have seen him on this rope. He was crawling upside down. We, he, I guess, didn't have you didn't pack pants or something well i did i did but i didn't want to wear them oh you didn't want to wear <laughs> I want, them. what i really wanted to do was show show everybody what a country boy is all about oh so. <laughs> you did too boy you showed a boy right what on. a country boy was all about yeah hell yeah you did and uh his legs because we're upside down on the on the rope we're all marred up let's yeah just i got some skin missing let's just say that <laughs> yeah skin missing on the back of his calf on the back of his hamstring and uh, he finished the, the the rope every exercise. He did everything. So um, I hope it just goes to give you confidence back home to execute this program. Not, and I think forget about one million, brother. This three million dollar goal. We're gonna let's do it. Just take one million dollar goal, throw it in the trash, okay? Mm-hmm. And w- we're gonna build this business to three million dollars this year or bust. And I guarantee it. We can get it done. Well, let's do it. All right. Well, guys, again, if you like this content, we, we threw a mix in there with some hunting, and we tracked a bull and knocked it down on man Trey <laughs> here, gave you the insight on what it takes to do that, and we related it to you know, growing a roofing company. And this man came you know, uh, from a culture in which he went to work at the age of uh, 10 years old yeah, basically, on top yeah. of a roof. And uh, you know, I say turn your oddities into your commodities. Yes, sir. Tell Absolutely. your story. Um, about, you know, breaking out of what I call limiting beliefs. Well, that's a big, big, big thing for me. You know, Because you said they think that salespeople are the devil. Essentially, yeah. They think I'm the devil. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, man. There's been some dumb stuff that I've done. I'm not a perfect person. I certainly am not someone to put up as the godly guy. But I, <laughs> but, but I, I am saved. I, I, right I try to do the next right thing every right single on. time. I do have a good heart that cares about people like you as blue collar entrepreneurs in your future. And to every single person on the farm, I would say, look, we fix big problems for big paychecks. And you might say sales is a bad thing, but I believe it's my moral duty. If I believe in my business, if I believe in my solution, if I, if, if Trey believes he's the best roofing contractor that can offer the best value, then it's his duty to, to help that other person avoid hiring the wrong guy. And if that means that he has to, you know, transfer the confidence that he has in himself to them through, you know, making a strong point, well, all's fair when you're doing the next right thing. And that's why sales is not evil, because the more you sell, the more the business can grow, the more people that you can put to work and the more you can give back to your community, the more people that hear about you, the more money that you have to make an impact on the world. And if your intentions are pure, if you are doing the right thing for the right reasons, then, you know, being an entrepreneur, making a lot of money, it can be used to build a platform to really express the same core values that you grew up on. And that's what you did. You came here, you showed, you showed for your whole community. You were the toughest pound for pound son of a bitch out there out and, and you did it 
in a way that um, also carried a good spirit in a godly way. And, you know, that, that's a re- good representative of where you come from. And it's a good representative for anybody who maybe is there right now and thinking about coming to join what the Blue Collar American Dream is, you know, doing the work with your hands. It has a limited amount of income. You can only make a certain amount of money. And in this world, it, inflation, things are very expensive. And with the American Dream, the idea is if you learn the skills that pay the bills, the ability to communicate, the ability to sell, you can still be a part of the work. You can see the problems get fixed and the people get the solution, but yet you can get paid a little bit more money. And if you're smart, you can use that money and invest it in things that create more money, like advertisements, videos that create leads, jobs, and then you can multiply your income. And once you do that consistently time after time, saving 40% of your money, you know, I'm sure you have aspirations. What's yes. your American dream? Tell us what you're going to do in five years when you've executed all this, made millions of dollars. My, my American dream is to write my mom a paycheck, take care of all her bills. Um, and after that, love you, mom, if you watch this. Um, after that, I want to take care of my family. Like, I want to be at my kid. I want to be at Baby Hawks baseball games. Like, I, I do. And then at, after that, I want to be there for my wife, you know, because you know how it is. If you're out there busy grinding every day, you're sometimes you're not there for your wife and and it gets hard. Um, I want to have time and be able to control my time. And I want to bless other people that are less fortunate than me because you want a big um, farm. (laughs) <laughs> I, I own 80 acres I've, I, as far as a farm like I'm happy where I'm at but I do want I want to create generational wealth oh, like I, I care about that I want to save 40% um, my brother uh, Scott he's a big inspiration of mine when it comes to this uh, he's debt free and he wants to stay debt free uh, he's saving 40% um, this, this is all and, and this is why you're differently I'll, I'll plug you like this is why you're different like you teach this stuff um, like like leads and stuff, it's all great. We all need it, but we also need core values. And because if, if you don't, what, what are you going to do with ten million if 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 you don't have core values? Amen. And, and Jason was talking about that. Um, so what I, as far as what I want to do, my American dream is to change my family tree. You know, and 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 be there, be a good father, and be a good be a good dad. You Sounds know? like you know what you want, man. I do. I and do. A lot of people don't know what they want. A lot of people are watching this. Their kids. How old are you? I'm 26. This man is 26 years old. He knows exactly what he wants. He's got a young family. He's making a footprint on the world. And you check with this man in 10 years, and I'm telling you something. You're gonna see a guy that's sitting in the same type of position that I'm sitting in right now. And uh, I'm really proud of you, bro, just for stepping up and being here. This was an awesome episode. You really showed out on the on on your ability to create content because you did really good telling stories. It was very, uh, it moved throughout the entire podcast. It was great, guys. If you enjoyed this, um, like, subscribe, comment below. But more importantly, go find him and watch the whole hunting video at the Bow Hike Experience. Go and subscribe to the Bow Hike Experience. All right, Trey. We'll catch up with you next time, thanks, brother. Thanks for having me, Lee. Appreciate it it, it was it was an honor being here. Um, I watch all your episodes. I wish more people would because I think you're spreading the good word in uh, in contracting. Um, but it was an honor being here, and I want to uh, thank you for having me. Okay, guys. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Trey and you want to come join his team, um, how can they get a hold of you, Trey? Uh, you can just reach out on Instagram or what's your Instagram? Uh, my Instagram is just my name, Trey Hosteller. How do you um, spell it? T R E Y H O S T E T L E R. Mm-hmm. Or if somebody's interested in working for me, just reach out to me and call me or text me. Uh, my number is 417 446 2198. All right, guys. Or you can comment below on the YouTube if you find this story motivational and you want to connect with Trey. I'll get you hooked up. Comment below, subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks a lot.